for Evgeny Plushenko. Skating's top gun right now. We'll compete on home ice at the Grand Prix Final in St. Petersburg, where world champion Arena Slutskaya will also skate before her Russian fans. Her main competition comes from this mighty might, Sasha Cohen of the United States. Team Canada comprised of Langlois and Arquetto and De Bruyne and Lazan. It's the Grand Prix Final. It's next on TSN. Beautiful city of St. Petersburg in Russia. Two days of skating. Lots of skating coming up. Two days right here on TSN. It is the ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating Final. And hi, everybody. I'm Rod Black along with Tracy Wilson and Debbie Wilkes. Welcome back to our coverage. Uh, the World Championships are creeping closer. Everybody's jacked up about that. However, before the Worlds, we have, I guess you could call it, the Mini Worlds. The big one before the biggest one which is a little different than last year, Tracy. Well, this Grand Prix final is not as big as last year. Last year, everybody was tuning up for the Olympic Games. They were fit and ready, and the world's best were at the competition. This year, the skaters have been struggling with injuries, so a few of the top skaters are not in the competition, but, Debbie, many of the top ones are. Absolutely. Let's remember that this event is the culmination of the top points earners from the six Grand Prix events in the fall. A lot of those skaters are using this event as a tune-up for the World Championships. Well, one guy who doesn't really have to tune up, I don't even think he has to warm up. He could do this blindfolded. <laughs> I, I hate to give the competition away already, but we can hand it to Evgeny Plushenko. He easily is the prohibitive favorite. Yes, he is, and that's because he has dominated all year. Nobody has beaten him. And Alexei Yagudin is not at this competition to distract him. So we can expect him to dominate here and just to continue on the role that he's been on. I think the ladies' competition, though, is going to be much more difficult. We've got Irina Slutskaya, who's the reigning world champion, but out to try and knock her off the podium, Sasha Cohen from the United States. So I'm expecting quite a fight in the ladies' competition. And in the dance, I expect Russia. No Shailen Bourne and Victor Kratz, Marie-France Debray, Patrice Lazan representing Canada, but we started off with the pairs. Shannon Zhao of China, also the big favorites. Oh, absolutely, and that's because since they won the World Championships last year in Nagano, they have been undefeated. Well, you ready? Let's do it. Let's go to St. Petersburg, to Russia. It is the ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating Final right here on TSN. Here are the world champions. Zhuea Shen and Hongbo Zhao, they are the prohibitive favorites, not only here, but at the Worlds. However, they are dog-tired world champions. This format is very difficult for all the skaters. Not only have the four continent skaters been doing uh, trips around the world, but today having to do two programs on the same day, this one the short, followed by what we're calling Free Skate A later on. The program's worth in the amounts, the short program, 20%, Free A, 30%, Free B, 50%. Strategy is what this competition is all about. Short program, eight required elements. Up to two minutes and 40 seconds in duration. Bad loss at unison. Spins are traveling. Fairly serious deduction there.
but an exquisite double twist. With the exception of the error in the side-by-side -side spin, the other elements are all good, but the team is not skating with the usual kind of fire and power. Well, they had a very tight schedule. Not only were they at four continents, they had to go to Nagano to compete in a show program and then fly here and they are still the world champions but suddenly the unbeatable might be beatable and we can blame some travel for that it tends to eat up your energy uh, of course that's why you train so hard so that even on a bad day you can be good so now on home ice, Tatiana Tatmianina and Maxim Marinin. They finished behind the Chinese at the Worlds and have been second ranked all season. But now with the Chinese having a couple of hiccups, the Russian team could vault ahead. More classic, more balletic in their style. This is a team that, with their several wins on the GP circuit, have gained momentum all throughout the season. Throw triple loop. And excellent side by side triple toes skated very closely together. element that Shen and Zhao had so much trouble with. Fantastic. They've matched Jen and Zhao and have been better in the Chinese real Achilles heel, their spins. We said all season it would take a tremendous effort for someone to knock off the Chinese team. Keep in mind that they weren't with their A game today. But this was good. They do not have the kind of fire and uh, excitement that the Chinese team has. But with a poor skate by the Chinese and without that sparkle, certainly... Tokmianina and Marinin take the day. And coming up, 
Annabelle Langlois, Patrice Arquetto, and yes, Tatmianina and Marinin not only take the day, they take the lead. And of course, they're also skating in front of their own. So obviously, the hometown crowd can also sway the judging panel. Here are the Canadians. Their first trip to a Grand Prix final. It has been quite a steep learning curve for this team in the last couple of years, skating behind Jamie Saleh and David Peltier. Now there is a title in Canada and a torch that has been passed, but not really a pairs team that wants to take it. This could be the team. Part of international success, too, is also about getting the attitude that you belong with the top skaters in the world. So the experience here at the Grand Prix Finals will help Annabelle and Patrice gain that kind of confidence on the ice that is so necessary for international success. High flying, throw triple south cow. side-by-side -side triple jump. Been their nemesis this season. Got him today. I love the way this program bombs from element to element. There's very little setup between elements. An indication that a skater must have the confidence in each element to be able to move so quickly to the next one. Coming into the final moments of the program, the first clean short program we've seen from this team all season. Yeah, they've had some valleys this season. Number two in Canada, number four at four continents, number six after the short program here in St. Petersburg, Russia. We'll be back. On the ice at the Grand Prix Final, this is Maria Petrova and Alexei Tikhonov also of Russia. The only thing that Russians have more than rubles and caviar, pair skaters. They have developed so many over the years. And these two were world champions three years ago in East France. only doubling the planned triple toe. The thing that made this team world champions was their consistency. You could always count on them, although it might not have been romantic or particularly exciting. They got the job done. Since winning, 
inconsistency has been a big problem. Kind of funny, life is timing. One of the few world championship teams that were ever ranked second in their own country. And even now are still ranked underneath Pachmianinan Marinin. Before that, it was Berejnaya Sigurlice. skating, wonderful edge work, clean, deep edges. A very nice combination from the forward inside death spiral into the pair spin. What's interesting to see right now, it's only a few weeks before Worlds, how all of these teams are rounding into shape getting better and better even though there has been so much travel and difficulty for all the teams the world's is shaping up to be a hot match so after the short program surprise surprise top Mianina and Marinin ahead of Shen and Zhao and that means the Chinese team looking to pick it up in free skate a so let's take a look at the highlights first the Canadians Sixth after the short program. Excellent throw into side-by-side -side double axles. However, that pesky side-by-side -side triple sow cow, a tough point for the team all year. Petrova ticking off now. Third after the short. Still problems with the side-by-side -side jumps. Although I question why after the short program, when Langlois and Arquetto were perfect, why did this team beat them? Again, a very difficult day for these teams. Two programs, one day. But no problem for the Russians. Patmianina and Marinin. That put the pressure on Shuea Shen and Hongbo Zhao. But a fall on the side-by-sides. Uncharacteristic for this team. And a collapse in one of the lifts. Looking absolutely exhausted. It showed on the ice. It showed in their marks. It showed on the leaderboard. Difficulty, too, for these teams doing two free skates. So Tatmianina and Marinin leading Shen and Xiao, who have to come from behind now. Evgeny Plushenko, highlights of the short program. The Olympic silver medalist, former world champion, and right now the man to beat. He has the bullseye on him, and he is the top gun. With Alexei Yagudin not skating because of injury, Evgeny Plushenko vaults into the number one spot. Opening here with his quad in combination. Quad toe. Triple toe. And once again, Evgeny Plushenko is right on. Short program this year to the music adagio. Eight required elements in the short program. This is his triple axle. The perfect position in the air and on the landing.
What makes Pushenko so tough to beat is his jumps are extremely consistent. Nice tight air position and he's got feet like a cat. But what his weakness is, is moments like this where he's pausing on two feet. There are empty moments in his choreography. So a, a better choreographed program with the jump can beat Pushenko. Many of the Russian skaters use that pause to get some oxygen. Good chance for a refresher. Oxygen and focus. Emmanuel Sandu, for instance, tears around the ice with great choreography, but he loses the focus on his jumps. If he could combine it, he could challenge this, pro this program. And the other skater, not in this competition that Plushenko will face head-to-head -head at Worlds, is Takeshi Honda. Takeshi won four continents championships and then hurt his ankle, so he's not here. But I don't know if he could have touched that. Evgeny Plushenko makes quads look like triples and triples look like doubles. He's like butter. And he's on a roll. Well, it's going to take a perfect performance to catch this skater, Genny Plushenko, undefeated on the Grand Prix circuit this season. Poor little guy in the background there to wipe out, but he's up. This guy never wipes out. Plushenko, undeniable. Number one right now. Heading towards the Worlds, heading towards the second free skate. Rest of the standings. After that short program, the skaters had to skate their first long program before the free skate finale. And here is what happened. Alexander Apt up first of Russia, who was third after the short program. Alexander is one of my favorite skaters. He has great galloping strides, a native of Moscow, opening there with a quad double, but unfortunately the quad was on two feet. He was only able to manage four triple jumps in this performance, and so that was good enough to have him in third place. Another skater from Russia, Ilya Klimkin. There's a fine triple axle, triple toe combination. He also struggled on his quad. Nobody even close to Yevgeny Plushenko in this performance. Ilya Klimkin had to settle for second. And the roll continues for Evgeny Plushenko. Again, look at that quad triple combination, straight up and down, perfect in the air and on the landing. Watch this unique combination. Triple axle, half loop, triple flip. Feet like a cat, he can do jump after jump. Well, there is only one way he will not win this competition. And probably the same can be said at the Worlds. If he misses the bus, Plushenko so far above everybody. But remember, Takeshi Honda, he might be the unknown factor, not skating here. One thing's for certain in this competition, these Russian skaters are making the most of skating at home in St. Petersburg. One, two, three right now. Marty France Dubray, Patrice Lazan, who will inherit the mantle from Shaylin Bourne and Victor Kratz as the top dancers in Canada, Bourne and Kratz, their swan song will come at the Worlds and maybe with the World Championship. But Dubray and Lazan here at the Grand Prix Final coming off a fourth place finish at Four Continents. And that was a very disappointing fourth place finish for them. Two teams that they had beaten at last year's Worlds overtook them in the competition. Marie France is struggling with an injury to her right hip, and that has severely affected their training. The original dance, Memories of a Grand Ball.
nice position on the spin, one of the required elements in the dance. Other required elements, two footwork sequences, a circular, and this, the straight line. Their straight line sequences filled with content. Watch their feet. The judges will be looking to make sure that their unison is on. Finishing with the most difficult part of their sequence, the twizzles. They perform that very well. What I find, Rod, while the choreography is very intricate, in places it's almost too busy. It doesn't allow them to kind of flow from one position to the next. It's very fast, and sometimes it looks like they're having to chase the music instead of interpret it. What a year of transition for this team, moving to France to train. Getting a chance to go to the Grand Prix Final, and they'll be back at the Worlds in Washington. To Brian Lazan at the ISU Grand Prix of Figure Skating Final on TSU. Dance uh, from the Grand Prix Final, Marie-France Dubray, Patrice Lazan getting rather low marks, by the way. And on the ice now, Tatiana Navka and Roman Kostomarov from Russia. Up-and-coming team, a team that a lot of people have been talking about the last couple of years and this might be the year tracy wilson that they're really going to make a move well they've already been so successful on the grand prix circuit expression so important for the original dance and you can see the way they make the most of their long limbs to hit these striking poses and lines and then they pick it up with the fast footwork and it makes a nice contrast. They're a rather fetching couple and that helps. Look is not the biggest factor. But look, is a factor. It is a factor, and their unison, the way their lines match, and their expression, very genuine and catching. Program choreographed by Navka's husband, world ice dance champion Alexander Zulin. Very effective choreography, making the most of the phrasing of the music. They could be on the podium this year at Worlds. Worlds are shaping up to be a great horse race between a number of teams, including Shailen Bourne and Victor Kratz, and everybody has seen how well they have done in their last amateur season together. So this Russian team will be a factor. But the main competition for Born and Kratz will come from this Russian team. World champions last year, Irina Lobacheva and Ilya Averbuch. Skating to music by Strauss. And once again, as is often the case with this team, they're over-costumed. I, I find they're terrific skaters but their costumes are over the top and already are taken away from what they're doing. Distracting.
Wasn't it too long ago, Tracy, where there was an edict sent down by the ISU that they had to tone down the costumes? What happened to that? Well, this is artistic, and they're trying to c help uh, enhance the character of the music, but I think what sometimes the skaters forget is they're not in the theater under the spotlight. They're in a skating arena under house lights, and costumes like this, to me, don't work. They take away from what they're doing. What I do like about the opening of this dance is the way they gain speed without having to work for it in their soft, delicate position. are the current world champions and as you mentioned rod they will be meeting shaylin and victor at the world championship it's going to be quite a competition i think the weakness in this program is there's some blank spots in the choreography where Ilya is not really being challenged he's presenting irena and i think that's going to have to be addressed particularly because of the difficulty in born and kratz's program This is their straight line sequence, and again, I think the degree of difficulty is not high enough. It is not a remarkable straight line sequence. What they did, though, they did well. The most compelling thing about Lobacheva and Averbuch and Born and Kratz, though, is the fact that they have not been on the same ice together since last year in Nagano, making it a very intriguing matchup at Worlds. So, the original dance, world champions on top, Navka and Kostomarov making some big strides over higher ranked skaters, including the Bulgarians, Ukraine fourth, Dubray Lazan sixth. The free dance, the first free dance, the standings did not change, setting up the second free dance. We'll have the women coming up next. Back in St. Petersburg, homeland of Victoria Volchkova, Opening with her double axle, the first of eight required elements. Russia so far has dominated the Grand Prix final and every discipline. Irina Slutskaya is still to skate. Well, Victoria Volchkova won the Cup of Russia. She outjumped Sasha Cohen at that event. Watch the height she gets. Here comes her triple lutz. Very nice opening, triple lutz, double toe. And now her footwork into her triple flip, and you can see quite a break in the footwork, but a beautiful triple flip at the end. But that is a deduction for the entry of that jump. 0.1 to 0.3. I'd give it a 0.3 because there really was no footwork to speak of going into the triple flip. But probably the finest triple flip you'll see in the competition.
Well, skating has been waiting for Victoria Volskova and the much anticipated breakthrough, and I'm sure Victoria has been waiting too, but this has been kind of a coming out season for her. She's coming up with big marks. Big rivalry. But do not forget about someone else lurking who's not skating at this final. That's Michelle Kwan. But right now, Irina Slutskaya and Sasha Cohen, world champion against possible future champion. And here is the Russian Slutskaya. Skating to victory by Bond and sporting a new hairdo. Hair matching the color of her dress. Here's her combination. Triple left, double toe. Good height, but not a lot of speed on the landing of either of those two jumps. No deductions, though. the footwork here going into Irina's triple flip on one foot and right into the jump very nice in this program. It has not been a banner season for the defending world champion. She's been knocked off the top of the podium a couple of times at Grand Prix events. Lost the Russian Nationals. But don't bet against her at the Worlds. She's a primetime player. Yeah, she's taking her time building up this season, Rod, and I think part of that has to do with the fact that she was bitterly disappointed at losing the Olympic Games. Also, her busy touring schedule after the Olympics and World. But never count her out. She's a fighter. performance to the variety of positions the flexibility she's showing in this final spin three-time Grand Prix final champion a bit of a funky ending yeah a little wobbly there <laughs> but building towards the world championship may have even cut herself on the blade What a story, what a season for Sasha Cohen. Came flying out of the starting gate in the Grand Prix year. Couple of victories. Then came back down to earth. Losing to Victoria Volchkova at the Cup of Russia. And then finishing third at the U.S. Nationals. Michelle Kwan won. Now building towards the Worlds. And maybe a world title if she can put it together. Triple Lutz, double toe. Nice start. Make no mistake, this is the skater that every other skater fears. Great artistry, but she needs consistency on her jump. Triple flip, that was beautiful. Right out of footwork. Showing a well-centered spin, stays in one place on the ice. It's almost as if, though, Sasha, and I don't know if it's an experience thing, 
she has had her problems it may have been from a lack of concentration it's exactly or perhaps what it nerves. Is. She loses her focus, makes a nasty mistake, and then comes back fighting it. You cannot make a mistake at this level of competition and win. Stunning spiral sequence. Does she ever work a room capturing the building, owning the ice? Sasha Cohen. Easy for the judges this time. Short program. 18-year-old American leads. Irina Slitskaya second. Victoria Volchkova third. Mamea Suguri in fifth place. Free skate A results. Again, they skate two long programs. And after that, Arena Slitskaya took the lead, setting up the free skate final. So it will be Slitskaya, Cohen, and Volchkova battling it out. And the Russian and the American head to head. Might see that at the Worlds, too. So stay tuned tomorrow on TSN. We'll have the final free skates, and it should be grand from the Grand Prix Final. Goodbye, everybody.